i. In the last class, I solved few numerical problems related to hydraulic cylinders. Now, let us move on to the next type of hydraulic actuators which are rotary actuators, they are considered as motors. In this class, I am going to give complete details regarding the different types of hydraulic motors used in fluid power engineering. To begin with, today in this class, I am going to cover hydraulic rotary actuators and motors. The major points which I am going to cover are construction and working of rotary actuators like gear, vane, piston motors as well as hydraulic motors. Theoretical torque, power, flow rate and hydraulic motor performance. Also, in the next class, I am going to solve numerical problems on hydraulic motors and in the, with special reference to the rotary motors. Also, I am going to give an overview regarding symbolic representation of hydraulic rotary actuators in circuitries, in circuits. Let us understand the objective behind this class. To explore different types of hydraulic rotary actuators with special reference to fluid power engineering. To study various features and working principle of hydraulic rotary actuators. And also to solve numericals regarding this topic rotary motors. This is my plan. Also, to represent rotary actuators using symbols. So, I am going to use symbols to in place of schematic diagrams on hydraulic circuits. So, hydraulic actuators part 2 motors. So, this is the motor, this is the actuator. So, moving on, what is this actuators? As I told in the previous class, actuators provide the movement or the motion. It may be linear motion or rotary motion. Linear motion, I have ex exclusively dealt for hydraulic cylinders. Now, I am rotary motion concerned with rotary motion. Now, rotary motion is provided by motors. Now, the, again there are two variations, complete rotation and partial rotation. Both are required for fluid power applications. The hydraulic rotary actuator uses pressurized incompressible fluid to provide the mechanical motion or the mechanical rotation. They are very faster in operation, they provide good torque characteristics and they are sensitive in operation very and they operate at very high speed or rpm before go, going on moving on to the next topic let us distinguish between hydraulic motor and pump right so it's very important we need to know the difference between hydraulic motor and pump so first what is a pump a pump is a device which converts mechanical energy supplied by the electric motor to hydraulic energy. That is basically it is used for circulation purpose. So, it enhances the flow pressure. What is a motor? The motor is exactly the reverse of the pump. A motor is an hydraulic device which converts hydraulic energy supplied by the hydraulic pump into mechanical energy to do some useful work. So, both are antagonistic in nature. 
So, the next important difference between the hydraulic motor and the pump. Pump, pump performs the function of adding energy to hydraulic system. So, that is it is increasing the flow pressure for transmission to some remote point. So, it is used for circulation. So, it increases the pressure and the fluid flows from source to the receiver. What about the motor? Whereas, the motor extracts energy from the fluid and converts into a mechanical output to perform useful work. So, what I mean to say is in short a pump is power absorbing device whereas, a motor is power developing devices. We require the services of both in an hydraulic and pneumatic system. So, one more differentiation a pump fluid pushed by the pump to hydraulic system. So, it is basically circulation whereas, in motor fluid pushes on the internal surface of the area of the motor developing the torque. So, it both are having different function, one is for circulation and one is for actuation. So, after clearly distinguishing between the pump and the motor, now let us move on to the continuous rotation hydra hydraulic motors. So, we have two types of rotation, partial rotation and continuous rotation. So, a majority of the pumps used in uh, pumps as well as the actuators or the motors used in uh, rotary motor rotary actuators or motors used in fluid power engineering are continuous type. So, let us explore the continuous type of uh, hydraulic motors. So, they as the name suggests they rotate continuously. Some classification gear motors the first type of motors, vane motors depending upon the rotating element, piston motors right. So, gear motor and vane motor they continuously rotate whereas, piston motors they oscillate. So, let us understand the working principle of these uh, motors one by one. So, gear motors the first type of motor is gear motor as the name itself suggests it is employing spur gears. So, this is a schematic diagram of a simple gear motor. So, this is an external gear. So, two identical gears meshing one another having same pitch circle diameter enclosed inside a casing a metal casing a volute casing is considered as gear motor drives. So, this gear motor as the name itself suggests one is connected to the driver another is driven right. So, one rotates in clockwise say other rotates in anti clockwise. So, at the bottom there is a opening and at the top there is a opening the bottom one is called as the inlet the top one is called as the outlet right. So, once the motor is switched on the driver gear starts rotating and which in turn is meshing with the driven gear, the driven gear also starts rotating, but this time in the opposite direction right. So, a flow is created a vertex flow is created which sucks the fluid up at high pressure. So, because of the torque a whirl is created a whirlpool is created that is going to suck the fluid to the top. The torque is generated by differential pressure across the tooth. The effect of the pressure across this tooth cancels the torque generated by one of the above tooth. Therefore, torque is a function of pressure and area of one tooth. So, let us understand the working principle of this type of gear motors. So, this is the 
industrial gear motor, the pictorial view of industrial gear motor available for different applications. These are available based on different configurations, based on power ratings, based on head discharge as well as the RPM involved. So, let us understand the working principle of this gear motors. So, you can see two gears continuously rotating, they are identical gears, identical gear means they are of the same configuration that is the pitch cylindrical diameter is equal, the pressure angle is equal, the thickness is equal, the gear thickness is equal, so everything is equal, right. So, one is driver, another one is driven, one is rotating in clockwise, say another is rotating in anti-clockwise and you can see that continuous rotation will ensure a pressure differentiation and a vertex flow is formed and the fluid is sucked. The bottom side is the inlet side and the top side opening is the outlet side, two openings, right. So, a pipe can be connected from the bottom side that becomes the suction pipe. The suction pipe in turn is connected to the source tank, whereas on the top side you can fit the delivery pipe and that is connected to the application. So, this is a very compact type gear motors, only external gear motors are popular now. So, this is very compact type and it is used for especially fluid having high viscosity. But the main problem with this type of gear pump is that if some contamination accidentally enters into the system, what happens? The gear gap between the two gear teeth gets trapped and uh, sometimes backlash results and uh, the gear starts provide, uh, operating in a very noisy environment, it provides noise and vibration and sometimes uh, the gear teeth are clipped off. So, make sure that you provide the fluid which is filtered. Now, move, let us move on to the next type of motor that is the vane motor. As the name suggests, we are going to fix one vane. So, different types of vanes are available, we can employ them. So, two types available, one is unbalanced vane motor and the balanced vane motor. Initially, the unbalanced main motor was invented and to overcome the shortcomings, the refined one or refreshed one balanced vane motor is available. So, let us explore what is this unbalanced vane mo motor is all about. So, you can see the diagram of this unbalanced vane motor. So, it is having a circular casing and inside the circular casing you have a rotor right, and a vane, a differential vane, but you should see that the casing center and the rotor center they are at an offset. So, what I mean to say is the outer layer is the casing, the middle layer is the cam and the inner layer is the vane. So, this red color outer member is the casing, this blue color member is the cam or the chamber and this green color is the vane and this are the blades available, they are differential vanes they are not uniform veins. So, as you have studied in pumps, we do not have a different uniform veins because we, we need to develop pressure differentiation. So, one is longer than the other. So, increasing again decreasing. So, inlet this is an horizontal configuration, you can also expect vertical configuration, you can keep this vertically also. So, the inlet is connected to the suction pipe outlet is connected to the delivery pipe. So, the suction pipe continuously ensures non-contaminated fluid enter into this chamber, right. So, once it enters to the chamber, this vane starts rotating, tangentially it strikes the vane. So, the vane starts rotating and the rotor which is attached, it starts rotating. 
so pressure is developed right so let us understand better in the next slide the working principle of this unbalanced vein motor so this is the pictorial view of unbalanced vein motor available in different configuration or given different specification so you can see the unbalanced vein motor the working principle so fluid is entering on one side and it is leaving on the other side right so the motor is continuously rotating right so the vein is continuously changing its length right the same vein is not maintaining the same height throughout the rotation the height is increasing as well as decreasing so pressure will be increasing and pressure is will be decreasing because of the crescent shape profile created by this type of mechanism so you can see that in this case the inlet is this side and the outlet is this side so blue side is the inlet side and the red side is the outlet side so this is connected to the suction pipe this is connected to the delivery pipe so continuous rotation is taking place the pressure of the fluid is building up and uh, it is circulated to the suction delivery pipe right so this is the working principle of an unbalanced vein motor so this unbalanced vein motor is used in industry for supplying large quantity of fluid at a considerable i pressure head now let us move on to balanced vein motor so balanced vein motor is the improved improvised version of the previous one that is the unbalanced type so what is the difference so if you see the difference between this and that configuration the inlet and the outlet were in line and only it had one pair of inlet and outlet but here you can see that there are two pair of inlet and outlet right so one is top and at the bottom they are the inlet and the outlet is right side and the left side so what is happening is continuously the fluid is sprayed from the top and the bottom side so rotation of the balanced rotor takes place and the pressure is what delivered from left to right side right so very important is two i vacuum pressure is required here and does not allow the vein to extend three small pressure here and the important thing here is no question of eccentricity that is the cam center the casing center and the rotor center they are coaxial what i mean to say is they are concentric so cam center the cam, uh, the uh, casing center and the row center the, the rotor center they are concentric in nature so fluid is continuously circulated from north side and the south side and the fluid is continuously extracted from the each side and the west side so top bottom left and right top and bottom for supply left and right for delivery so totally there are four ports so what is happening is this is balanced type compared to the previous one the previous one was used for light load application and it failed in perform failed to perform in heavy duty application whereas this one it was applicable to light uh, uh, the moderate as well as heavy duty application since it is balanced and torque what about the torque the torque was applied on one side there now the torque is applied on the top as well as the bottom side two sides so it ensures more speed right so for better understanding let us move on to the balance type so you can see the balance type what is happening here this is the block casing block right and you have blue side means the suction red side means the delivery so one from the top side and one from the bottom side continuously the rotor is rotating because of the water rushing inside and causing the rotor to continuously rotate because the rotor water rotates the rotor tangentially 
Now pressure is developed because of the profile of this casing, volute profile is there. So differential pressure differential is available and continuously what is happening? The pressure is created. So veins are available again similarity between the previous cases. You can see this veins, yellow color veins, they are available and these veins are differential that is their stroke length varies instantaneously. They increase, they lead to maximum and they decrease resulting in high pressure. So this is a very stable configuration compared to the previous one. So this is balanced vein motor. Next type of motor is piston motor. So inline piston motor or what we call it as swash plate design. This is the first. Second one is bent axis piston motor. So the input and the output axis are in line. This is the first configuration. If the input and the output pipe are at an axis, then it is called bent axis piston motor. Let us explore these two variants. So first one, inline piston motor or commercially it is called as swash plate. So you can see the schematic diagram of this type of motor. The inline motor because the input shaft and the out sorry the input pipe and the output pipe are in line. So no axis and there is a runner which is having multiple cylinders engaging multiple pistons. right? So continuous rotation means that swash plate which is having the pistons connected they are also continuously rotating. right? So to begin with you can see the movement, so inlet and the outlet, so inlet and the outlet and this flash plates continuously rotates, right. So the movement of the fluid is like this, it enters the system, it rotates the flash plate and leaves the system at an high pressure. At entrance it is low pressure, when it starts rotating in the flash plate it generates high pressure and then it comes out. One swash plate may contain 4, 6, 8 cylinder and piston arrangements. They are all small what micro cylinders and micro uh, pistons. Let us look into the different parts. It has a cylindrical block, it has a swash plate, a draining mechanism. Also the torque is generated by the piston force equal to the pressure multiplied by the piston area. For better understanding, let us un see this animation of this swash plate. So you can see this swash plate where you can have the different types of pistons continuously rotating and they are having differential strokes. right? So this is the cylinder block. So inside that cylinder block, you have hollow cylinders, so 8 to 10 hollow cylinders. 8, 4, 8, 12 hollow cylinders, uh, cylinders, uh, cylinders are available. Each cylinder is having an identical pistons engaged and every instantaneously the stroke length is different. Not all the uh, 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 pistons are having the same stroke. That is why because of this swash plate. You can see this cylinder, you can see the piston, cylindrical piston, you can see the cylindrical rod because of this tapered section what is happening is it is creating an uneven stroke inside the cylinder block. So as a result what is happening pressure differentiation is taking. So that is if you start with the pressure is minimum at the entrance, it keeps on building up, it becomes maximum at the middle stage and then again it becomes starts decreasing and it becomes zero. So it is something cyclic in nature. So this is the working principle of swash plate and this is the swash plate. So the swash plate is straight at the one and inclined at the other. This inclination will create differential stroke inside the piston and cylinder arrangement. Bent axis type 
piston motor. So, bent axis type piston motor as the name itself suggests that the input shaft and the output shaft are not in line, they are not straight or not collinear, but rather they are at an angle, right. So, this is done in order to give more efficiency to the previous type. That is, if you supply the fluid at a proper angle, so what happens? The more impact is created on the rotary swash plate and uh, more pressure is applied and more pressure is created, more force is applied, velocity is in more and the pressure developed is more. So, you can see the variation here. So, bent axis type, this is the opening, I have opened sectioned view of the bent axis type. You can see this is the suction pipe and this is the delivery pipe, right. So, continuous rotation is ensured, right. And inside that you can see these holes, these are all cylinder holes. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, starting minimum 4, 6, 8, 12, like this you can see more number of holes here, maximum 12 holes. Every cylindrical holes are engaged with pistons. If 6 uh, cylindrical holes are there, 6 cylindrical pistons will be there. It is bent, agile, it is bent and continuous rotation is ensured. So, suction is from this side, delivery is from that side. So, fluid enters from this side, fluid enters. So, this is some, something like this. It enters here, it rotates and then it comes out. So, pressure builds up. For better understanding, let us see the working principle of this bent axis type piston motor. So, you can see the bent axis type piston motor. So, this axis and this axis, they are not collinear. You can see here, the swash plate is little bit inclined and the pipe correspondingly, the delivery pipe is also inclined because that is attached to the slash plate. So, on one side an horizontal pipe is available to which this uh, cylindrical block is fit attached, it is continuously rotating. So, inside that cylindrical holes are there, 6, 8, 12 holes are there. Correspondingly, it is engaged with cylindrical pistons having stroke length differential, right. So, it is connected to this swash plate and because of this inclination given and as, as well as the uh, output side is also at an angle to the input side, more pressure is applied on the system, right. So, pressure is created. So, this is somewhat improvement over the previous case. So, just we are giving, we are supplying the fluid not horizontally, but at an angle. So, this increases the uh, impact force. So, impact force increases means the rotation of the uh, cylindrical block also increases. So, if it increases, pressure also increases. So, this is the working principle of bent axis type piston motor. So, this motor is used for power plants where we are engaging lot of fluids and we need to circulate this fluid for a longer distances. And in some cases, oil wells, we fix this in oil wells which run deep. So, one oil way may run thousands of kilometers. So, in offshore or onshore, we are going to fit this bent axis type piston which is continuously going to extract the oil from the earth interior. Moving on, let us study some of the performance characteristics of this hydraulic motors. So, we have studied about the gear motor, the vane motor and the uh, piston motors. So, let us study the performance of this hydraulic motors. The performance of hydraulic motor depends upon certain factors very important like manufacturing precision. This is very important. See, so many manufacturers are there, they provide pumps, but they are not accurate. That is, the required pressure, head and the required RPM 
the required electrical rating is not maintained. So, this results in poor performance of the pump. So, manufacturing precision and accuracy play a very important role, particularly as we know that the efficiency of the pump or the motor drops over a period of time. So, the same pump is not the same after 5 years. So, its efficiency will drop considerably. So, at the initial stage itself, if you employ a pump which is not as efficient, so if it is 60 percent efficient, probably by 5 years it becomes almost half 30 percent efficient. Second important is maintenance of close tolerance. Since pump involves lot of moving parts, so the close dimension tolerance need to be maintained. Otherwise, it results in eccentricity and other complications which results in not only the malfunctioning of the motor, sometimes the motor may burn or due to overheating, results in lot of maintenance. Third one is internal leakage. So, we know that the uh, pump is fitted with both the types of seal that is static seal as well as dynamic seal. So, static seal is re, such, uh, related to structural parts where there is no movement, whereas the dynamic seal is related to the rotary parts where there is movement. So, we need to take care of both these two, otherwise this results in a uh, lot of leakage. So, the fluid entering into the chamber, if starts leaking, then the quantity of fluid so, uh, supplied will also come down. So, we need to see that the gasket and seals are properly fitted and they are not leaking. Friction between internal parts. So, as you know that the motor, there is lot of friction between internal part means that the motor a surface, inner wall surface is uh, uh, contaminated or it is uh, filled with uh, sludge or uh, sediments that uh, do not ensure smooth flow of water, a fluid. So, it results from uh, uh, initially the flow is uh, laminar, then it transition occurs, then it becomes turbulent. So, to avoid that complication, we need to have smooth movement that is as far as possible avoid contaminants entering into the pump or the motor casing. Internal fluid turbulence. So, fluid turbulence is very important because we are going to feed the fluid directly into the motor. So, there is a problem here. So, we need to have additional reservoirs. So, better to have additional reservoirs which acts as motion arresters. So, the main reservoir, the fluid is coming, it is kept in a additional reservoir for some period of time, what we call it as an accumulator. So, there all the turbulence is uh, arrested and the flow becomes laminar, you supply that laminar into this pump. So, the pump will work under maximum efficiency. So, after looking into the performance of hydraulic motors, which is very useful for selecting a best motor for a given fluid power application. Now, let us move on to uh, a one step ahead and suggest typical gear and wear piston motor all overall efficiencies. So, the literature survey says that the gear motor is having a efficiency range from 70 to 75 percent, wear motor is from 75 to 85 percent, though so it is just less than the gear motor. So, piston motors is having the highest efficiency 85 to 95 percent. So, piston motors is having the highest efficiency followed by vane motors followed by gear motors. So, in the order of increasing efficiency, if you see the motor is the piston motor is having the highest and the gear motor is having the lowest and the vane motor is in between. This is because the piston motor prevents leakages, no leakages is available and as well as the the other aspects are properly taken care, maintenance aspects are taken care in case of piston motors, whereas vane motor and gear motor are frequently subjected to wear and tear and their performance will come down. 
Next, the very important uh, topic is volumetric efficiency. So, volumetric efficiency of an hydraulic motor is given by Q ratio of Q theoretical to Q actual into 100, right. So, if it was pump, it was if you take the volumetric efficiency of a pump that is uh, equal to Q actual by Q theoretical for motor it is reversed Q theoretical and Q actual whole thing that is the discharge theoretical discharge sorry theoretical discharge to the actual discharge, right. So, the reverse of the pump, where Q T is equal to theoretical flow rate, the motor should consume and Q A is the actual flow rate consumed by the motor. Now, theoretical torque, how to calculate theoretical torque? Because torque is directly the indication of power. So, theoretical torque is calculated by the product of pressure, velocity, and a coefficient, where P is the pressure in Pascal and V D is the volumetric displacement measured in meter cube per revolution. So, 6.28 is nothing but the constant if you multi uh, 2 pi 3.14 into 2 is equal to 6.28. So, V pi by 2 pi or V, v suffix D into pi divided by 6.28 both are same. So, mechanical efficiency, next volumetric efficiency, next mechanical efficiency. So, mechanical efficiency of hydraulic motor is given by the actual torque delivered by the motor to the torque which the motor should theoretically deliver. So, this is also reverse of the pump. So, this is actual torque to the theoretical torque. Now, the motor, uh, the formula used is T actual by T theoretical whole thing multiplied by 100. So, actual torque is equal to actual motor voltage divided by motor RPM in metric units, where T A is the actual torque delivered by the motor and T suffix T is the theoretical motor torque. Now, overall efficiency. Now, overall efficiency is the product of two important efficiency that is mechanical efficiency and volumetric efficiency. So, we define overall efficiency as Overall efficiency is equal to in the numerator actual power delivered by the motor and in the denominator actual power delivered to the motor, right. So, this is equal to a product of volumetric efficiency and the motor efficiency by 100. So, if you simplify and apply all the variables T actual torque multiplied by speed in the numerator divided by pressure and volumetric displacement in the denominator. So, with usual notation where T A is the actual torque, it should be in Newton meter, N is the motor RPM in radian per second, P is the pressure in Pascals or Newton per meter square, Q A is the volumetric displacement in meter cube per second. Selecting an hydraulic rotary actuators. So, after studying about the performance, now there should have a certain criteria for selecting an hydraulic rotary actuators for a particular application. So, first one the duty that is whether it is heavy duty or a standard or a light load application. Second one it is complete rotation or partial rotation. Complete rotation means it is 360 degrees, partial rotation means 180, 200, 220. But majority of the rotors in hydraulic fluid power engineering is complete rotation. Next, maximum output torque and the holding torque. So, maximum torque and the holding torque are very important, right. Output torque represents to the torque developed by the motor, holding torque is the torque corresponding to the maximum speed. Next, acceptable backlash. So, backlash is nothing but generated because of the eccentricity between the uh, motor center and the uh, uh, rotor center, the rotor center and the casing center. So, uh, the, there should be an eccentricity, but how much is too much is important. Maximum bearing load. So, it is whether it is taking moment, thrust or radial load. Hydraulic fluid and its operating temperature. So, hydraulic fluid 
temperature is also very important, hydraulic fluid nature is also very important, whether the hydraulic fluid is highly viscous or moderately viscous or it has poor viscous, viscosity index characteristics because viscosity and temperature are directly dependent and if the uh, particularly if the fluid is having uh, working under high te in a temperature uh, re re regime then viscosity will have a bearing factor on the performance of the motor. So, all these uh, are very important and we need to know the uh, significance of each and every factor. Next the mounting, the mounting type also plays a very important role whether it is flange mount or the foot, foot, foot type. So, because different mounting configurations are available and sometimes if the mounting is not done properly that results in the uh, vibration aspects of the motor. So, motor itself starts vibrating because we need to connect that motor to a foundation and if the link that is the mounting is not done properly. So, what happen is vibration is transferred to the foundation. So, vibration followed by noise. So, we, we should differentiate between vibration and noise. Vibration is structured bone and noise is air bone. So, both phenomena are unwarranted and we need to look into that seriously. So, all these factors need to be considered while selecting a good hydraulic rotary actuator for a fluid power application. Hydraulic motor symbols, as in the last class I demonstrated different symbols for actuators. Same thing here, we need to know different symbols because we can rapidly put these symbols in the hydraulic circuitry and this is self explanatory. So, if you see this type circle and this one, so this is the reservoir and uh, this uh, shape is the reservoir and this is the outlet and this is the shaft. So, fixed displacement unidirectional motor, so only one arrow downwards, right. So, this is variable displacement bidirectional motor. So, variable displacement you have an inclined arrow like this, you can you have an inclined arrow like this, right and you have the arrows, two arrows pointing towards each side. So, this is bidirectional and this of course, bidirectional means, so it is flowing this side the shaft is rotated on the clockwise direction. If this flowing from the top, top towards the top side, it is rotating in the other side. So, what I mean to say is, if the direction is from uh, source that is the source to the receiver clockwise direction say is possible and if the direction is from the receiver to the source anti, uh, anti clockwise direction of the shaft is possible say. Right. One more variation, variable displacement by rotational pump. Right. So, this is variable displacement, you can also vary the direction, you can also vary the displacement. Right. You have to just put in two valves, direction control valve and flow control valve. So, you can vary the direction. So, symbol here rotates two condition. Right. So, because we cannot use separate symbols for two states. In a single symbol, we are, we are representing two states. So, that is why we are writing variable displacement, variable by rotational pump or motor. These symbols are very useful because they help us to design the circuit rapidly. We need to insert the symbols, we need to select the pump and we need to uh, what insert this so that rapidly we can generate the circuit. Next is extension fixed displacement bidirectional rotary hydraulic motors, this is the symbol, arrows boats, no uh, arrow uh, inclined arrow means no inclined arrow present means it is a fixed displacement. Here two uh, arrows are present, so it is variable displacement, here also variable displacement, right. So, this is a bidirectional, unidirection, so this is unidirectional, unidirectional means there it is from the top to bottom, that is from the receive, uh, source to the receiver or from the receiver to the source. So, variable displacement, unidirectional rotary hydraulic motor. So, this is com combining these two, right. So, it is a variable type as well as it is having both bidirectional, top to bottom, bottom to top, from source to the receiver, receiver to the source. And this is limited rotation. So, limited rotation type hydraulic motor with bidirectional. So, you can have both the possibilities. So, these symbols are very useful for us in order to apply the uh, to build the circuits. Now, let us move on to the summary part that is where I am going to give a quick reca recap 
regarding what all I thought in today's class. First up, I explained the different types of rotary actuators available and their variants, their functionalities. After explaining that, I classified the hydraulic motors based on certain references or criteria. Then I explained special types of motors. The working principle and the constructional aspects of all the basic type as well as special motors has been explained in detail. Now, also later I gave you symbols used for representing these motors, so that you can insert these symbols on the circuit diagram which you have built for a given application and you can represent these motors in ease rather than drawing schematic diagrams. And in the forthcoming class, I am going to solve problems on motors and some numerical problems on motors illustrating how to find out the performance parameters like volumetric efficiency, mechanical efficiency and uh, overall efficiency, pump rating, torque etc., which are used for selecting a pump up for a particular application. So, what is the major outcome or takeaway after attending this class? At the end of this course, the student will be able to select hydraulic actuator based on a given application. So, in this case, the hydraulic actuator is going to you are going to select is the rotary actuator for a given application based on certain performance parameters like pressure, head, overall efficiency, etc., velocity of the piston, etc. The second takeaway is demonstrate various features of hydraulic motor. So, constructional features. So, each motor is unique. So, each motor is having its own construction. So, you have I have you should be in a position to demonstrate the various features of hydraulic motor because it helps you in selecting the motor for given fluid power application. Finally, we are going to solve a numerical problems on motors in the next class. With this and also the last and not the least, we have identified motors using symbols. So, there are two possibilities. One is if the circuit diagram is given to you, you uh, and you have to read that circuit diagram and you have to identify what type of motor is involved. This is the first type. The second type is you are going to design the motor, you, have to des you are going to design the circuit by your own. So, you are going to put the symbol there that is going to represent the whether it is a basic type of motor or special type of motor. One is reading the diagram, circuit diagram and one is designing the diagram. In either cases, symbol identification is very important. So, that we have done in this class. So, with this I stop at this point of time and I will continue with numericals on motors in the next class. Thank you.